Welcome from beautiful Bilbao here in the heart of Basque Country, Northern Spain, a city famous for its football club and their diehard fan base who've adopted tonight's headline act as one of their own. Over 5,000 are expected here in the Bilbao Arena to see the revolver Kerman Le Haraga make the first event of his European Super Welterweight title against Britain's underdog, Jack Flatley. European medalist and Olympic quarter finalist Samuel Carmona looks to continue the excellent start to his professional career. He faces Guadalajara's Luis Fernando Padilla. Eight rounds of flyweight action to get us started. And so we're underway then in the sixth contest of Samuel Carmona's professional career after some high quality successes in the amateur ranks and says that one of his greatest strengths is his physical strength and he'll be looking to put that to good use here against Luis Padilla from Canelo Alvarez country in Guadalajara in Mexico and fighting outside of Mexico for the first time in his professional career, one which has reaped 13 wins from 17 contests but his two defeats have come in his most recent two fights. Well, being the professional that I am, Mike, uh, when I've looked at these two on paper and doing my research back home, this could be fighting like this. They're, they're both aggressive fighters. Padilla, though he's been beaten, he's only been stopped once, he's got the more experience over the two, but Carmona, he switches, but he's aggressive. He puts everything into his shots, as you see there, and I just feel with uh, Padilla's heart, the, the Mexican warrior that he likes to call himself a Phil. This has got the makings of being a cracker, Mike. Good shot to the body there from Carmona, and no doubt about it, Padilla felt that and reeled away. And he's trying to find some kind of sanctuary, but over on the far side of the ring now, Carmona senses there's an opportunity here for a rapid finish. Padilla is hurt, another body shot, and now Carmona opens up, and this was billed as his toughest test so far. And it could be all over, it is all over, inside the first half, almost the first half of the opening round. A quite stunning performance from Samuel Carmona. Ladies and gentlemen, referee has stopped the contest. And one minute 30 seconds on the first round for the winner by Ternicat. Knockout from Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, Samuel Carmona. The apprenticeship continues for young Campbell Hatton, who's had a busy year. His fifth fight in nine months. Tonight he's up against Attila Susera Kile, who comes to fight six rounds at lightweight. Scheduled for six rounds in the lightweight division. It's the fifth professional contest of the career of Campbell Hatton, who said that we'll see a different and a smarter fighter this time around suffered such criticism after that win on the undercard of Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk at the Tottenham football ground towards the end of September. Stung by that and now wants to overcome that mental as well as physical issue from that last particular contest. Good start, sharp start behind that left hand, confident start from Campbell. Yeah, that's what we need to see, Mike. There's lots of uh, variation with a jab. Already now, uh, I was calling on his hand speed needs to be improved, and I can see it already. It seems like he's sharpened up a little bit from his last previous contest. Yeah, he's got to be switched on with that jab. Because Sir Kelly, if you do let him into the contest, he does let his hands go. He's got eight KOs on the record, so I'm not afraid to let his hands go. As we see here, that was a good left to the body from Hatton there. Beautiful shot, followed by a right hand. Well, we saw in the first contest how Samuel Carmona got on the winning trail, starting with a body shot, and there was a definite grimace on the face of Chizerikli there when he took those two shots. First of all, the left hand and then the right hand to the body from Campbell, and Chizerikli goes down, and will the referee take up the count here? He does, before the halfway stage of the opening round. So this is a much brighter start for Campbell Hatton against the 25-year-old Hungarian. And now it's for Hatton to just take his time here, look for the openings. He's got his man under pressure, no need to rush. Yeah, this is better box him up. Beautiful left to the body there. Chiserik Lee down for the second time in the first two minutes of the contest. And will he beat the count here? 
He gets up virtually as the referee gets to nine and listen to the applause here for Campbell Hatton, the famous boxing name, and they're getting behind him here. Still learning, still improving, and we've seen the improvements in that opening round there. Sharpened his shots up, wasn't pushing with them as much. That was a lovely feint with the jab. Followed it back with a left hook to the head and drops to the left of the body. That's intelligent boxing. He used to do, do it so well, didn't he? Ricky Hatton, double up with the left hook, get the reaction, get the hands, gloves up, and then drop to the body. That was a beautiful opening round from Campbell Hatton. Got more intelligence in his work, more thought. Doubling up with the left again, beautiful stuff. Raining shots to the body and the head, and Cesare Clay again looking for a way out, covering up on the ropes. Security, you see, looking very jaded, walking back into the neutral corner there. Oh, takes a left uppercut. Really, really good work from Campbell Hatton. Down for the third time. And that expression on the face of the Hungarian suggests that he might not beat the count this time around. There's a shake of the head, and it's all over in the second round for Campbell Hatton, his fifth professional contest. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has stopped the contest at 2 minutes 45 seconds of the second round for the winner. But technical no call. Campbell Hurricane Hatton. Next up, Mohamed El Marcucci has an opportunity carved out for him by his manager, Kieran Farrell, knows that the doors of opportunity could open with a good performance tonight, but he's up against it. There is much to like about Jonathan Alonso, who has just one blemish on his 21 fight record, a points defeat to the excellent Alberto Cuello, who he pushed right to the wire over 12 a couple of years ago. For Alonso... Oh. So, Jonathan Alonso on the right of screen here, who represented Spain at London 2012, continuing his professional career. 20 wins so far, seven of those coming inside the distance. Alonso trying to work his way in behind the face, but Marco Marcucci at times reading them well. Yeah, sorry, Mike, that, that's the shot that Alonso needs to look for. He needs to change the level with that jab. Said, oh, that's good. So he gave the ice to the body then, come upstairs with the right hand. When you're fighting the taller fight, you need to work the body. You've got to be working up and down with the straight shots. Try and draw the reaction from your opponent. He did exactly that there, Alonso. He come upstairs with the right hand. Beautiful shot. Good left hook from Alonso as Marcusi was clearly looking all the time for the right hand. The left hook from Alonso and he gets on the attack once again. Again, applause from the crowd here in the Bilbao Arena getting Stokes up ahead of the appearance of their hero, Clement Leharaga, defending his European Super World World title against Britain's Jack Flatley, top of the bill in a couple of fights time. Yeah, good response to that, Pucci. Oh, there's a big right hand there from Alonso. That's the remain switched on. Don't waste anything, but he needs to be busy. Well, To round three, then scheduled for eight. It's been a bright start by Jonathan Alonso, but El Marcucci trying to stay with him in that second round. The face of Alonso have been very effective so far, as well as the varying of the attack to body and head, and vice versa. Yeah, really setting traps well. Doing exactly what you need to do against the taller man. In that second round, Just needs to be a bit busier himself. More feints, try and draw the lead from Alonso, come back with counters. The urging from the corner of El Marcucci, this time he's going to fall in off balance, and this time the right hand from Alonso did get through. Once again, though, the Belgian takes it well, stands his ground. Oh, good left hook. Brilliant left hook from Alonso. Now he tries that winging overhand right, impetuous. He could have timed that produced a much more effective follow-up. Now the right hand gets through, and this time El Marcucci does have to hold on. Good attack this from Alonso, with a minute and 30 seconds to go in the fifth round. Oh, big one! 
This time he finds the range at last. After missing a number of times in the fourth round, he's got through once again. And now El Marcucci once again is forced to cover up. And again, Alonso lands with the more powerful shot as El Marcucci, maybe through an element of fatigue, is bundled to the canvas. Looking tired, Marcucci, you can understand why. It's been a bit of a the last couple of rounds. Good front foot pressure from Alonso. Razor sharp hand, raising close there, trying to work the body. Upstairs. The Belgian in the predominantly white trunks, who's been under pressure in particular for the last two rounds, was hurt badly in the opening round. And Alonso has gradually increased the tempo. Some good punch kicking in the last round. And again now, the beginning of the seventh. Overhand right and a left hook. And now Marcucci again is bundled to the canvas. The referee won't take up the count this time. But there is no question that Mohamed Al Marcucci is hurt and he's tired. And can Alonso now finish the job inside the distance? Marcucci covering up on the ropes just above us here at ringside. The shots are powerful from Alonso. Another one of those right hands bounces off the chin of the Belgian. The feints again from Alonso, which have been so impressive. And then he reads what's coming back at him from El Marcucci. And again, this is brilliant stuff from Alonso having made the Belgian miss and then makes him pay in heavy fashion in the closing stages of the seventh. Oh. 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 that's missing from this contest for, for Alonso is that stop, stoppage, that grandstand finish. Otherwise, it's been punch perfect. It's been a really good performance from Alonso. I don't want to take too much credit away from Marcucci, who's fucked well in patches, but just been second best. And even in these late stages, El Marcucci is finding the strength to make Alonso miss. Last attack here from Alonso. Started it to the body, missed again with that right hand over the top as the crowd really start to get into full voice here in the Bilbao arena. And Jonathan Alonso already celebrating what he is convinced will be the 21st win of his professional career. Ladies and gentlemen, after a round of boxing, the judges the score are referee, Mr. Dwee, 18, 18, 72, Mr. Calvan, 80, 72, and Mr. Jonah, 80, 72, for the winner by unanimous decision, from Gijón, Asturias, Jonathan Maravilla Alonso. Yeah, good win for Jonathan Alonso. Next up, Damien Biasho defends his Spanish super middleweight title against countryman fellow unbeaten fighter Guillermo Rivero. 10 rounds in the 168 pound division. So, Damien Biasho emerging from the red corner starting the first defense of the Spanish super middleweight title. Spanish title fights under the national regulations here contested over 10 rounds. Well, you can see already, after a minute and a half in this opening round, why they've only got three stoppages between the two of them. They, you know, they, they're not the biggest punchers. He's actually very relaxed, doesn't really go through the gears. He's a very nice, tidy boxer when he gets going, but not much tempo from either man. You should follow that. Shot downstairs, back upstairs, bit of variation. Good right hand from Gruviera, that's better. Good shot, maybe the best punch of the contest so far, thrown by Guillermo Rivera. Maybe that now will stun Biaccio, the champion, into work. Style from Viaccio, but he's alive and on the That's better. Four punch combination followed by another one. That's a better tempo. No real spike. 
in the shots, but still, at least he's letting his hands go. Joe's corner much happier with what he's been doing in the opening minute of this third round. A lot of success for Biacho. Good left hand to the body at the end of that exchange, and then another combination where he finished with a left hook to the head. Lovely variety from Biacho. Does seem to be warming to the task now as we head to the halfway stage of round three. Yeah. Biacho going back to the neutral corner of his own volition here, happy to allow Rivero onto the front foot. And now standing off, brilliant work from Damian Biacho. Terrific combination. Waited for Rivero to move forward, and Rivero now gets up. Will the referee complete the count here? He's having a good look. Boxing's best than Biacho now. Good left hook from. Rivero falling over that front foot though, he's got to be careful. After being knocked down with an uppercut, he's got to be falling over the front foot. This is good work from both men, letting their hands go. And Rivero firing away in the area of the ring where he was floored a round ago. He's getting, he's getting out of work here, sorry Mike. Rivero letting the shots go, oh good. Left and right uppercut, followed by a left hook from Biaccio. Has to stay switched on, Rivero. This is a good response. It has to stay switched on. And still, Biaccio on the ropes, allowing Rivero three shots time and time again. Allowing Rivero to build confidence and allowing Rivero to recover from that left up a cup that floored him earlier in the contest. Big crowd here with Bill Bow. Start impressing. That's good work. Beautiful up cut again, Mike. Brilliant work, swiveling off the ropes by Biacho, who might well say this was how he planned it all the way. Rivero is listening to the count. He seems as though he's OK at this stage. What's the referee going to decide here? He will allow him to continue. 45 seconds to go. The crowd there almost lifted Rivero to his feet with their urgings from all around this Bilbao arena. They come here mainly to see Cameron Leharaga. But what they want really also is a win double. For now, this is desperate for Guillermo Rivero. Down for the second time in the contest. How can Biacho now build the tempo? Can he finish this? Good shot to the body from the champion. Roasting left hand underneath the elbow of Rivero, but still, gamely, the challenger steps forward. to the body again at the end of the round and what will the referee decide here he will continue the count after the round Rivero down for the third time in the contest will 60 seconds be enough the referee you see there having a good look into the eyes of Guillermo Rivero down for the second time in the round the third time in the contest to the referee that Biaccio was hitting Rivero on the top of the head and yet didn't get a warning for it. And now Biaccio springs off the ropes once again. Some good work there, Biaccio. Tried something new, he's creating an angle. So right, that's good work. He's landed that right hand round the left club. Of Rivero, numerous times as well. There's a left hook there, Mike. Puts Rivero down again. And Rivero furious with himself for taking that shot. But he's in trouble once again with 20 seconds to go in this deep seventh round. Listen to the crowd as he rises to his feet once again. They love a warrior in these parts. Their favourite son is soon to defend his European title. But is Rivero on the way out here in his quest to win the Spanish Super Middleweight title as he makes his way back to the corner after four knockdowns? And in the corner there you see they've decided that enough is enough. It's all over at the end of the round. Un applauso, make a noise for the two fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, Tamasi Caballeros, the winner, the technical knockout at the eighth round, and still a Spanish super middleweight champion, vencedor por abandono KO, técnico en el octavo asalto y retiene su título, Damian Guinea. 
So then, top of the bill, let's get the introductions from Nacho Gutierrez. Spain. We are set to go with the main event of this evening. Damas y caballeros, y ahora sí, quiero escuchar a este público, quiero escuchar a Bilbao, porque solo ahora, damas y caballeros, esto no hay quien lo detenga. Ahora es el tiempo. interview when the fight was first announced Jack Blackley in the blue corner there said when I'm an old man I'll look back on this and be proud how proud surely will depend on the result as the crowd sing let's go Kerman ahead of this European super welterweight title fight and we're underway 12 rounds here in the Bilbao arena can Blackley silence the crowd as Neharaga gets to work straight away on the front foot and has success with the left hand. Let's go, Kerman, once again. Here's the chant from the crowd here in Bilbao, in northern Spain. And Neharaga, always aggressive, always looking to get on the front foot, as he was in winning the title against the Frenchman Dylan Charat in September. He does so again. Doing the right thing, he's moving in both directions. Upwards moving to the left, onto the right hand, he's moving both ways, keeping the Haraga thinking. But the Haraga has been a very positive opening round from the local man, very positive on the front foot. Oh, and he's in with a jab, brilliant shot from the Haraga inside the last 20 seconds of the opening round, and flatly looked on very unsteady legs as he went down. Will he be saved by the bell here? The referee waves box on, flatly onto the back foot. This could be a sensational finish. He's badly hurt and on the ropes as the bell rings. So all of that happened right at the end of the round and flatly did look as though he was on unsteady legs. Looked as though he was more hurt than in that fight against Troy Williamson. Can he respond here? Can Leharaga build up that tempo again? He hurts Flatley with the jab. Flatley tries to cover up, throws his own shots back, but still that piercing left jab of Leharaga is the dominant punch of the contest. Quite hook for Flatley there. Solid work again from yeah. Neharaga to the body and the head there. Yeah, really good work. Neharaga, yeah, a lot of good variation. So impressed with the jab. Big right hand from Neharaga. He took it well flatly. Off in southwest. Off in southwest. Tremendous atmosphere here in the Bilbao Arena as Neharaga lands another left hook, another heavy shot. After good work on the jab from Flatley. Beautiful again from Flatley. Showing his skill in the contest again. Takes a right hand and Leharaga gets set to follow up. And this is good work, as you say, Darren. This is an improved Leharaga. He's really picking the punches here and finding the gaps. Well, when you consider where the British fighter was at the end of the opening round, this is turning into a sterling performance, and we're not yet at halfway. A minute to go in the fifth round. He's got final success with a jab, but now an uppercut from Leharaga gets through, and Leharaga goes on the attack once again, and Flatley is forced to cover up. An uppercut gets through from that exchange. Then a left hook. Leharaga steps off to give himself punching room. Meeting those shots from Leharaga, the beautiful left uppercut. I think that stunned 
slightly, ever so slightly, and just backed him into the ropes here. But credit to Flatley, he's still there, letting his hands go, trying to exchange hooks with Leharaga. Another short right uppercut goes in from the Spaniard as well. Good action here in the fifth round. From Flatley, but the applause was for the hook that was the response of Leharaga. He yeah, caught that left hook. Flatley, the damage under the right eye is damaging. He may be struggling to see those hooks coming. Start the seventh round, it doesn't seem to be any signs of Leharaga tiring. It's working really, really well, head and body. And if Jack Flatley does. Notice that there's been a dip in the work rate from Leharaga. It's down to him then to get to work. He's trying to sap the energy even more of Leharaga. He's looking strong, the Spaniard on the front foot. The right hand to the body though from Flatley. Back comes Leharaga, working the body well. And we can hear the sound of those punches above the crowd noise here at ringside when they land on our side of the ring. And they are punishing shots. Whatever happens here, Flatley will be hurting in the morning. These are powerful punches running home from the Herald. But still, Flatley is trying to measure him with a chair. But were those legs unsteady from Flatley there from that latest exchange? Good right hand, Mike, sorry, from flat knees. Some acknowledgement from Leroy, who lands a left hook. The knees dip flat knee. And somehow, flat knee stays on his feet and comes back and lands another one of those right hands that brought him success just a few seconds ago. <laughs> Right hand over the top from Leharada, and Flatley is down once again. He's looking at his corner, gets up now, the referee wants confirmation from Flatley that he's OK to continue, and then maybe as much as half of this round to go. How now can he survive? Can he follow up as Leharada goes to the body? This will be a test of a kind of Leharada and his finishing ability. The Still the blood appearing beneath the nose of Jack Flatley as we move into the final third of the contest. And very little sign so far of Leharaga tiring as Flatley's corner were hoping, but what a response from Flatley with that four punch combination. But can he sustain it? That's been the issue so far. He hasn't been able to build on his successes, but he's gone on the front foot. He's busy fire with fire and a right hand from Clermont. Finishes the contest. Leharaga kisses the canvas and now asks for respect for the fallen man, Jack Flatley, beaten, knocked out by a single pinpoint clinical right hand. And we just see Leharaga jumps in with a big one two there. Beautiful shot right on the point of the chin. And he was completely gone as, as he's on his way down. He's gone, and you see the head bounce off the canvas. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, the knockout of the round nine, and is still European Super Wonder Champion, Campeon, for Rakao, in an assault of number nine, regaining his title of Europe, German, the Republic, the Harry.